think I got that right. <laughs> um, if you guys didn't know, I don't know if we <laughs> mentioned it in the email, but uh, Michael's out of the office today. So I am stepping in for him and uh, hosting today's episode. Um, so everyone, can you see me? I This is my first time hosting, so I want to make sure that we're there. All right, good. I think I think everyone can see us, so we're good. Anyway, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, if you guys don't know me, my name is Bria Abrahamson. I'm on the taxi staff, um, and I'm covering for Michael today. And who I have next to me is the incomparable Robin Frederick. She's the best, and uh, she is just an amazing songwriting expert and coach and I can tell you from firsthand experience that the the expertise and the um, advice that she gives on songs is just so good so you Thank guys are you. in for a treat tonight and I know she's a favorite of all of you anyway so you guys don't need me to tell you that um, but yeah so today we're just going to be listening to some songs you guys submitted a lot of songs we got like 83 submissions um, so if you don't get Oh, audio is left channel only. Hmm. I'll see if I can fix that, but for now we're going to keep rolling. Um, and uh, they're saying my audio is left channel only. Um, so, sorry, I got sidetracked. So we got 83 submissions. So if you don't get your song heard, that's because we got a lot of submissions. Um, so please don't send an email asking why you didn't get your song heard. <laughs> You know what? When I'm and when I'm giving feedback, I really mm -hmm. try to give feedback that everybody can use too. So even totally. if your song doesn't get played, you know, listen to the feedback on the other people's songs, and I'll tell people what they did right, so that you know, mm -hmm. if you go, oh, yeah, I'm doing that too. I want to keep doing that, um, and I'll tell people what I think they could do to strengthen their song, and and then you can say, well, I could try that in a song of my own. Maybe I should do that. So you'll learn a lot, even if your song doesn't get played. Yes. So without further ado, we can start listening to these songs and Robin will let me know when she's uh, heard enough. Obviously, we want to we would love to listen to your whole song, but we don't have time to listen to all of them because we only have an hour and a half here. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, our first song is Make Show by Brie Lenny. <laughs> I wanna see what you gon' have to say When I switch a pie up to you Let the egos play Got my eyes on the prize now I'm just tryna reel it in She wanna play in the jungle with me She wanna touch my skin I've been down in the dirty mama Come and grab my hand I got the sticky of the icky on me Gon' pay the man I don't smoke no weed I don't do no drugs But I sip the cup If you feel it up Make sure that you feel it Make sure that it's real Make sure when you groupin' Don't know you gon' drink a kill Make sure that you feel it Make sure that it's real If the stage was a game And we all had to play I'ma go ahead and act the same Get down on the boogie Let it take control Keep All right. Great. Oh, I love that hook. Love yes. that hook. I love the whole song. I absolutely love this song. Um, I love the style. I love the hook. Love the vocal. Love the track with that great funky Mogi bass. Um, it's just wonderful. There's lots of funk influence on this song, and that's one of my favorite styles. I hear I, in, I hear a lot of Rick James. I hear the Gap Band. I hear the Daz Band. Um, a lot of the great... 70 early 70s funk bands uh late 70s early 80s actually that's a little bit later than the the parliament stuff um absolutely great i love i'm looking at the lyric and i can look ahead too and i see a lot of fresh wordplay here some smart twists on cliches i'll sip the cup if you fill it up really nice let the egos play i like that too got my eyes on the prize just trying to reel it in and then a great 
uh, hook on this. So one of the nice things is when you hit that hook, it gets there's enough repetition that that very chatty verse um, gives you a little break from the chat, very talky verse, and it gives the listener a moment to gather themselves and see what the song's really about, just in case they kind of missed it and they were just enjoying the music and weren't really listening to the lyrics. You get this great s series of hooks. Make sure that you feel it. Make sure that it's real. Make sure when you grooving on them, you go and dress to kill. I love this. Make sure that you feel it. Make sure that it's real. And that's the heart of the song. I really like it. It's called Make Show, which is great. That's what people are going to call it. So everything about this is working really beautifully. Um, it's got this great throwback sound and it's really authentic to the period. So there's a couple ways you can think about this in terms of marketing, because this is obviously ready to go out to market. It's not something you got to work on. It's done. Um, you can either take a, think of it as what Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack are doing, which is oh, the Silk okay. Sonic. I love that name. They oh, so got it. Yeah. Me too. They're doing, now they're doing a little bit earlier. They're doing the Delphonics and the OJs. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit earlier, but they're going to put out a whole album of that. And they've already got, I think, two, maybe three out already. And they're yeah. wonderful. So um, if Bray Lenny wants to put this out as a, a series of songs in this style, you can do that. Now, uh, I heard this song ahead of time, so I really liked it. I went over to Spotify to check out some more of the stuff that they've got, he's got. And um, City Emerald is a little more Motown. Easy on them is a little, is really contemporary alt R&B. There's nothing dated about that. So you're not really doing the kind of Silk Sonic, we're going to do a whole thing of this style. But if you wanted to put together an EP, maybe three or four of these, um, I know that they should do really well at social media. I would be putting these up everywhere. And I noticed, in fact, that you had 170,000 listens on this one for Spotify. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so I would just keep doing what you're doing, build your fan base up, get your stuff on social media, put out maybe an EP of three or four of these so you can really market that EP. Mm. And I would also be pitching these uh, to music supervisors and libraries, even though it's not a contemporary style. There's a lot of interest in this, in funk. Mm -hmm. And if there's a scene that takes place back in this period of time, and they don't want to use a true vintage recording from that time, something that people might recognize, like the Daz band, they don't want to put that in mm -hmm. because it'll draw attention away from the scene, then that you they would be looking for something like this that sounds really authentic, has great energy. Um, I think it's also a great dance tune. So you could put oh. this in at the dance clubs, I think, just as it is. And I think the dance clubs would be interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, even a couple more of these with, with that steady beat, you could dance to this. And I think that the clubs would be very interested in this um, and the dance charts. Not EDM, not not that stuff. Yeah. Not four on the floor. <laughs> this is something that DJ would love to put in in between a whole lot of that so that you get something different for people to dance up to and have fun mm -hmm. posing and voguing and all that stuff. So it'd be great. Love it. Absolutely love it. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, Bray Lenny, B-R-A-E-L-E-N-I, mm -hmm. folks, if you want to go check them out over at Spotify. I would. Yeah, yeah he's I great. Did. And I know this like funk genre and then also like disco, I feel like are very big now. Very I know hot. funk's been kind of coming back for a while, like with people with like, like Kali Uchis, I think is how you pronounce her name um, and stuff. But um, it's, I love funk and I love disco. So I think it's really fun. <laughs> You're not alone. I think there's a big audience for that and growing. And one of the things mm -hmm. I heard, you're right about disco, because if mm -hmm. you look at Dua Lipa's Don't Start totally. Now, you hear a ton of disco references yeah. in it. it. Makes you want to get up and, and mm -hmm. do that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. But I think the important part, too, is remem like remembering to really listen to how they're taking those songs and also incorporating the modern production techniques. So maybe how the the vocals are mixed or whatever that is so that it still feels really fresh because Dua Lipa doesn't sound like she's straight out of you know correct an ABBA record or something right but... and, that, and Silk Sonic doesn't either Silk mm -hmm. Sonic it definitely is a blend I've written about that song leave the door open and yeah. that is a blend of of the period plus contemporary vivid imagery and um, uh, tight rhythm section and things that weren't existing when the Delphonics were recording, which is what they're based on. Um, this one, I actually compared this. I went back and compared it to a couple of Dazban. And yeah. this, Ray Lenny, comes really close. Really? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, 
yeah, and it's it's both period. And that by that time we had the drum machines and we had some of the synths and the Moog bass and stuff. So you can do it and still sound mm -hmm. pretty contemporary and, and still yeah. stay real close to the late seventies, early eighties. That's really cool. Well, okay. Anyway, I wish I, I, you know what I should have uh, queued up is the applause sound so that we could have yeah. the applause going. But so sorry, guys, there won't be an applause after every song. I hope but, I gave them enough applause already. But yeah. they, they're great. So they do deserve yeah. it. So we'll just have to clap for them. All right. Uh, next song is this one is called Desperate Reunion. And this is by Brad Gray. Racing down to the station Backpack and guitar in his hands It's a frightened inspiration That only she could understand Scheduled billboards glaring overhead He's desperately searching for her Watching it leave seems so very easy Now we just can't let her go Look inside their desperate reunion That brings alive their special song Step inside this desperate Good, excellent, excellent. Uh, I love this. Uh, it reminds me of, um, vocally, it reminds me, uh, dead sure, it reminds me of David Bowie. And I really like that a lot. Also reminds me of, um, what's it, oh, Lou Reed. Um, mm. Walk on the Wild Side, Lou Reed. Uh, so again, we're kind of having a throwback day here a little bit, and so mm -hmm. far, and I love it. I absolutely love David Bowie and love Lou Reed. And so I think this is uh, working very well. It's got a killer vocal, character vocal. And character vocals are so important um, when you get into film and television where attitude is important, emotion. These things are more important than perfect pitch. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a character vocal does as well in film and television as Adele or Celine Dion. Really, you just put across the feel of it and the mm -hmm. viewer really gets that emotion. Um, the lyrics here are a story song, so it's not going to work for film and TV. I wish people could see the whole lyric to this song. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking at it. And he talks about racing down to the station, backpack and guitar in his hand. He's racing to catch the train before it pulls out with his lover on it. And he wants to apologize and say, I'm, I know I was wrong. And so he goes through literally every verse, tells, keeps the story going. And, um, and so there's too much storyline for film and TV, which is okay, mm -hmm. it wasn't meant for that. Um, it's really, the this, this song itself is, is, this, is this whole series of scenes and he catches up to the train and he gets down on his knee and he plays his guitar and it's just yeah. beautiful. Um, so as, he, as you do this, um, uh, Brad, everything's in present tense in the lyric, which is really good. Um, racing down to the station, backpack and guitar in his hand. It's, it's the frightened inspiration that only she will understand. So everything is in the present happening right now. And she sees him pushing through the crowds. Just check out uh, the verse down here, down towards the end, where he says, his fingers quiver, his heart bleeds upon the strings. He knew that he was wrong. Just keep it in the present. He knows mm -hmm. that he was wrong. And the next line, he sang, take me with you, I'll never let you go put it in the present he sings take me with you tiny little thing and if you can change that uh please just just that little thing everything else tracks really well through the story the one thing i would suggest on the um production um the verse production i think works really well i, I like the strip down and you really feature the vocalist that mm -hmm. great character vocal there it's working really well when the full band comes in 
it, I think it needs a remix. I think you need to get back in there. I don't know if you did this in your bedroom. Hopefully you can get back in there yourself and remix this. I would take a look at the mix on Look Inside Their Desperate Reunion, that section in there. When the band comes in, it comes in really loud and there's little definition between the instruments. In mm -hmm. terms of EQ, I would take a look at how each instrument is separated from the others. Also in the stereo field, you want to keep some some get some definition there mm -hmm. and then volume. Everybody's at the same volume. They're all in your face. So decide which instruments you want to feature there, pull back something, and then you can save some of those instruments for later choruses. So as the song goes along, the chorus builds, the arrangement builds, and you get more of this desperation as he goes along. Um, I think it's really well done. I think all the elements are there. It just needs some remixing and a couple of tweaks mm -hmm. on the lyric. I think in terms of genre, again, this is a, has a period feel to it. Oh, I know one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, we didn't play the bridge, uh, but I did listen earlier and the key change at the bridge, I think altered the mood a little too much. It became major. It opened up in a kind of a sort of a sweet, uh, light way that I thought didn't work with what the band, what the, the choruses were doing. So take a look at that. Keep it in a minor key, but you could still use the the, the synth or whatever it is you're using there to sweeten it up, but just keep it in a minor key. I think that's what was going on. Um, it's not going to work for film and TV, but it is really good for you as an artist. And as you go forward writing, if you're the singer on this, Brad, I would write in the Americana genre probably for that great character voice. And, mm -hmm. um, and pitch those out there. Take a look at, I'm going to mention Coulter Wall, I think, later on. Oh, I love somewhere. <laughs> I do too, yeah. yeah C O L T E R C O L T E R W A L L for folks who are yeah. not familiar with him. Sleeping on the Blacktop, favorite song. Oh, so good. <laughs> And, or just or go back through some of the David Bowie stuff mm -hmm. and see if you want to do more of this David Bowie influenced singer songwriter style because I think it's very hot. I think it's very hip and you could definitely do it. Just keep those lyrics more universal than they are here. And then mm -hmm. you could be pitching right into film and TV. You've got the voice for it and you've got the writing skills for it. Good work. Yeah. Well, and one thing I want to mention is, I mean, as you guys might already know, Robin is like a total expert on writing songs for film and TV. Um, and she has a book that you can kind of see the cover in the back that shortcuts to songwriting for film and TV. If you want to get better at writing songs for film and TV, you should definitely get this book. The link is in the description and I think Liz will also drop it in the chat, um, but it's a great book. And I'm pretty sure it, Michael has said that it's like the only thing book on the subject too. It is so, the only book still after so all this you, time. Yeah. yeah, after all this time, people haven't, you know, thought about that as much, but you know what, all you need is Robin's book because it's really good. Hey. There's a lot of expenses of expensive courses on writing for sync. You can buy my book for $35, 36, whatever it is and go. on Amazon. And it, you'll get that whole, everything they're teaching you in those courses. Um, mm -hmm. Plus all the business is in the back end of the book and it's all there. So save yourself some money and just go get this book. Yeah. And the other great thing about Robin's books too, is that it's not like a book that you have to read like all the way through, like it literally is shortcut. So you could go to whatever I have the, uh, hit songwriting one right here. You should also get that one. Um, but you can go to open up to any page and use it almost as like a like an exercise, like a prompt. So yeah, I did it that way so that yeah. you would go make music instead of reading a book. I want you to mm -hmm. not be reading a book. I want you to be yeah. writing songs. So by the time you get that book done, you're gonna be writing a lot of songs. There you go. Okay. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, the next song is called Monster and it's by Glenn Trainer. Thank you. 
Good, right. good, good, good. Boy, we're in throwback mode today. I, I heard a lot of psychedelic. Yeah, that's yeah. got a beautiful psychedelic guitar in it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That took me right back to um, The Who and oh, Cream, yeah. The, yeah. The, the the settings that uh, Eric Clapton was using in Cream, what he was doing on the guitar at that time. Mm -hmm. Very similar. And then in, in there's a spiritual element here. He's singing, Om Mani Padme, Hum, I Could Sleep mm. 1,000 Years. There's a whole George Harrison spiritual element here as well. Yeah. So I'm not sure... Uh, uh, you know, if, if all those were the inspiration for this song, but they are sure there. Um, the world's a monster not hiding in a hole. It'll meet you face on, kick your teeth in and swallow up your soul. Beautifully done imagery here. Mm -hmm. It really tells the listener what to feel, how to feel about it, what the singer is feeling and trying to tell you. It, although the singer never comes right out and says, this is what I'm saying. You know, the world's a monster, but, you know, why is it a monster? How is it a monster? People want to know when you start a song that way with a line like the world's a monster, uh, not hiding in a hole. The, the listener gets sucked in. That's a really intriguing opening line. Well done, Glenn, on that opening line. And for everybody, your opening line may be uh, or may not be the first line that the listener hears, but um, you want to catch them as soon as you can. So your opening line should be really strong, a good image like that strong statement like that that makes the listener go what's that about is really useful um then he's got a nice uh, refrain here um the omani padmium i could sleep 1000 years that's interesting too and and so it makes you want to listen continue to listen to the song as this mysterious uh lyric pulls you further into the singer's world i really like it and um it's a very the lyric itself um is spiritual you don't need boundless wealth there is no winning secret uh only inner self-control it's very zen buddhism um and i like that a lot so i think this song could probably do well again we're looking probably at social media because you could find the audience for this and build your fan base there um, because of the psychedelic sound of it, it might work for film and television for mm -hmm. some of those period uh, shows that I was talking about that don't want to go find and uh, try to license an original George Harrison track or um, Eric Clapton. And mm -hmm. they might then very be uh, very interested in something like this. So I think this has got um, a lot, some possibilities in film and television. Uh, it's, Outside of that, uh, I think I think social media is where you'll find an interested mm -hmm. audience for this. You know, get out to those playlists and blogs, and see if you can find the audience that really enjoys this style of music. They're there. Mm -hmm. They're there. Well, and definitely, there's there's a market for like neo psychedelia music as well. Like especially if you think about someone like Tame Impala, which is maybe a little bit more on the pop side, but um, that would be a good person to listen to if I you're trying to. Go I went a and bit looked more at, modern. I went and looked at neo psychedelic over on mm -hmm. Spotify because I hadn't listened to it for a while. So yeah. you know, uh, you folks, you can go over to Spotify and just type in that name of a genre if you're interested in hearing whether you sound like that or not. Mm -hmm. In this case, neo psychedelic rock is the name of this genre, mm -hmm. but this song is not in it because oh. when I listen to those songs, they're using reverb in a different way. They're using guitars in a different way. It's very mm -hmm. spacey. It's and it's um, it, it. This really is a throwback sound to the psychedelic, not neo psychedelic. Yeah. So it would be interesting for Glenn to go over there and anybody else who's interested in this style. It is a wonderful style. And maybe if he's interested, he can adapt his style if he wants to, to something that is current, is contemporary, and still does have these psychedelic influences in it. And that mm -hmm. will make it easier for you to find your audience, because then you know where you belong and who your reference artists are that are similar to you. Um, it's an interesting way to find out where you belong. And if you don't belong there, um, you know, keep looking. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, let's... Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, let's keep moving. Next up is, oh, and I'm getting complaints that my voice is in only the left channel. I don't know how to fix that. I tried playing with it to see if I could fix that. So sorry, guys, you're gonna have to bear with me. I can turn myself down a little bit though. So hopefully that'll help with a little bit of clipping. But here's the next song is, ah! I did not mean to cue that yet. <laughs> um, the next song is called uh, Kiss Me Now and it's by Evan Field.
living on my own Never thought that I could love again Didn't think I would find my best friend But here you are So kiss me now Before I lose my mind And go insane So kiss me now Before I song beautiful demo beautiful vocals nice strong vocal that fits this style really well um this could go in terms of genre this one could go from pop singer songwriter over to almost to alt country um it has got a little bit of a twang in it um but anywhere in there uh, those are both basically singer songwriter genres um really nicely done uh good opening line i was running on empty barely hanging on listener wants to know what's happening to the singer um alone and lost living on my own so right away we know what the situation is and that's really good this the listener knows what's going on is e either interested or not interested most likely will hang around never thought i could love again didn't think i would find my best friend there it is the entire story is right there in four lines i love it um so kiss me now before i lose my mind and go insane the only thing about that chorus is i thought it was too short <laughs> I wanted it to keep going because it's really a good chorus. Mm -hmm. um, it opens that, that great kiss me now, you know, and, and that's a, a wonderful line to have as the first line of your chorus before I go insane. I would love to see that continue another two or three lines. Um, I don't know. If, this sounds like a completed demo. So just keep that in mind as you move forward. If this is not something you can change. The other thing you're not seeing the full lyric, but I am looking at it and I'm seeing that the second verse doesn't really develop where I, I I want it to go and where I think listeners want it to go. So the second verse here says, standing on the outside, always looking in, resigned to li live a life without love. He's talking about himself again. Never thought that I could love again. Didn't think I would find my best friend. But we heard all that in the first verse. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want to go there for the second verse. You need to develop. Um, just before we got on the air, uh, Abria and I were talking about, and this is part of structure, it's development. The mm -hmm. song has to keep moving forward and taking the listener forward, giving them more information, keeping them involved in the situation as it moves forward. So for the second verse here, I would recommend saying something about, um, this is what, this is the, and this, here's the moment that I realized that my best friend was also the person mm -hmm. that I loved, you know, didn't think I would find my best friend. I think the best friend for life. Um, I think that the second verse could say, here's, here's what I love about you. Mm -hmm. Here's how you're my best friend. Um, here's how I feel when I'm close to you. Uh, okay. any of those would work in the second verse. Um, yeah, later in the song, there is one line that says, but all I know is when I'm with you, you always leave me wanting more. That's the only line in the song that actually tells us why he's attracted. So mm -hmm. listeners want to know more. Just think of your listener as um, the same people uh, who watch, you know, the Real Housewives of of Beverly Hills or or read the National Enquirer. They want the inside story. I mean, they want to be voyeurs. They want to be a fly on the wall, listening to what this singer is feeling and thinking and saying. And so you've got to reveal yourself. You can't hold back. And so answer those questions that listeners have, which is, well, what did you find out about her? What, what attracts you? How come you found, what happened when you found out you, that you've got a best friend for life? What, how do you know that? I want that. I don't know how I would even know that. How would I recognize it? They get a lot of life lessons out of our song. So go ahead and give it to them. Um, the, um, let's see. Uh, I talked earlier about, let's see, I'm excited but scared. This is a bridge. I think I'm excited but scared. You see, I've been hurt before. I think we figured that out by that point. And um, I think there's a guitar solo in there at 209 instead of a bridge. 
I mm. would go to a bridge. There should be more to say about this relationship than yeah. just one verse, a repeat of the same information, and then no bridge. And yeah. today's listeners, everybody, today's listeners are really singer centric. They really want to hear the singer all the time, all the time. Totally. You won't hear uh, the singer disappearing for an instrumental bridge these days. Mm -hmm. So keep that singer there, have him rip open his heart and tell everybody what's going on inside there and keep those listeners involved just the way they are when they watch reality TV shows. I love That's that. That's my theory. That's so good. That's my theory. <laughs> Why listeners are, have changed over the years. We used to be able to get away with saying much less. Can't do that mm -hmm. anymore. There you go. All right. Well, moving on to the next one. Uh, this one is called We're Not So Different, and it's by Gabe Garza. Think fast, my heart rate starts to rise. Stand still, my mind getting paralyzed. So much, I just can't take it in. We're not so different. Old news, and now I'm feeling new vibes. Fresh air, making this come alive Deep breath, I'm jumping off the high dive Can't find the words that I'm trying to say You leave me speechless anyway And I feel so vulnerable Now the whole world just melts away There's no more games left for us to play Beautiful track and mm -hmm. vocal. I love the vocal and the track. And gorgeous um, visuals here. Image, the use of imagery is very, very good. Now I'm feeling new vibes, fresh air, making this come alive, alive. Deep breath, I'm jumping off the high dive. You really get a sense of this person stepping into something new, stepping off the edge, taking a risk. Good imagery, good use of imagery there. Um, I think structurally, uh, this song feels like after the second verse, which is one I just read, and then the singer sings, just time to let it in. It seems like it wants to go to a chorus, but it goes to this section that, that sounds more like a bridge to me. Can't find the words that I'm trying to say. You leave me speechless anyway, and I feel so vulnerable. Pause, pause, pause. Mm -hmm. It seems like it wants more energy there and instead the energy drops and becomes more it becomes more fragile and it's a lovely section but it's it's not going to work as a chorus so what i would do is either use what i just sang that section that that line those two lines as a pre-chorus and then fall into your chorus take me or leave me take me or leave me which is what you end up with at the end of that section and that seems like a strong emotional line. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it has to do with what came before, but I'm not worried. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So if you fall in then into a big release of a chorus on take me or leave me, take me or leave me, and then finish that up and come back to your next verse, then I think you're in good shape with this song. It needs a chorus. It's a beautiful song. Now, it may not have a big chorus like a big uh, adult contemporary ballad or anything. It's not like that. You could do um, a chorus that comes back down to the same note range, but has an interesting pace to it. Take me or leave me, take me, take me or leave me, take me, take me or leave me. I mean, you could just do that and it would be an interesting chorus. The question is, what does take me or leave me have to do with the rest of the song? Mm -hmm. which is now called We're Not So Different. So I'm not sure that Gabe has a clear, that you have a clear idea of what your core idea is on this song. And you need that. I think you have two songs here. So get your core idea for this song, then take the lyrics out that don't fit that core idea, you know, and, and put them aside, start another song with them. It's either, this song is either Take Me or Leave Me, or it's We're Not So Different. Um, but I think you have those are two different songs. So I would split these up, 
and I would restructure this to put a chorus at the point where you say, just time to let it in. What a perfect pickup to a chorus. Yeah, let it in. Here we go. Um, and I think that you'll have a really strong song, beautiful vocalist mm -hmm. and a lovely track. So I hope you can keep working on this song because I think it's really worth it. Yeah. And look, I mean, if you have two songs, there you go. You have a start on another song yeah. <laughs> already. You got two songs for the price of one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really nice though. All right. Yeah, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, next up. This is called Chloe's Song, and it's by Hannah Griffin featuring Asher Rain. I'll be there for you. All you need is to say I do. Into the darkness I'll pull you through Lifting you up When it becomes too much I've seen your demons, they're not that tough But once you punch it will be enough You and me will make it through This love's a work of art I can't wait to start I'll paint a few strokes every day Cause you mean so much more than this song can say Your love hits me like a tsunami Your hug rescues me like I've never seen Your kiss breathes air back into my Good, I outstanding vocal. <laughs> yeah, and the chords, the, the track. It's yeah, very Shawn Mendes. Um, mm -hmm. Some of his earlier things, especially. Um, it's very strong in that way. Um, and it's a style I love. Uh, pop, R&B, pop. Mm -hmm. I love Shawn Mendes. I really like it. Um, okay, so I think there's a couple things here. I hope that you can work on this because I definitely think it's worth it. Um, to begin with, I would not call this Chloe's song. If you're going to pitch it into film and TV, you should, mm -hmm. of course, be, and, and there's no reason to. So the only other song I've ever seen that's done this was Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. And it doesn't ever mentions Iris. Um, yeah. But somebody dared him to write a song called, you know, the, with her name. And it, the mm -hmm. song does never mention her. Um, but if you're the Goo Goo Dolls and you have a huge hit with it, yeah, okay. Um, but I don't think that's a good idea here. And you have certainly some lines in here that you could use uh, as the... Um, as the title, I'm in love is the line that gets repeated is too, too generic. You don't want to call mm. it that, but you've got some great lines. Your kiss brings back your kiss, uh, you know, air into my lungs. I don't know. Um, mm. I'll be there for you. The, I think the problem with this song is that there's so many good lines in it, um, <laughs> but it, it's all over the place in terms of uh, what the central idea is. So yeah. a great line here. I've seen your demons. They're not that tough. You could write a whole song so about good. that. I'll help you face them. It's easy. I know what to do. Um, a one-two punch, it will be enough. So just in two lines, you've just taken care of this fabulous theme here. Mm -hmm. You and me will make it through. This love's a work of art, and I can't wait to start. Beautiful. These verses, the two verses at the beginning are really strong. I'll be there for you. All you need to say is to say, I do. Not sure we want to get there in the first two lines, but... Into the darkness, I'll pull you through, lifting you up when it becomes too much. I would start with verse two. I've seen your demons. They're not that tough. Mm. I would start with, isn't that a great line? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like there. I feel like that happens a lot where people end up writing their second verses really should be their first verse. You do see it a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because as songwriters, we tend to, we like everybody, we have to warm up. And mm -hmm. once, and to get into our theme, to really discover what our theme totally. is. 
And I think that that's a warm up that first verse. So I would just drop it out. Start with the second one. You've got uh, you've got a pre-chorus and you've got a long, fairly long chorus. So I would I think you'd be fine with a single verse leading into this. Um, then the pre-chorus is I'll paint a few strokes every day because you mean so much more than this song can say. And that paint is referring back to work of art. And as the song progresses, that changes uh, and we drop the reference to art. Um, and I would say that if listeners don't catch the line about oh, this love is a work of art, I would just keep your pre-chorus the same as it is later on. I think down here you say I'll work at it every day, something like mm -hmm. that. Um, because I don't, they may not catch that. I don't think you come back to the art reference again. Um, so they, if they miss that one reference, they probably won't, they then won't know what you're talking about. So never assume that listeners hear something you say once. This is for everyone. Because when we're working on our song, you know, it's like we have a microscope on it. It's like we see every word and we remember every word that we wrote. And that word that we wrote back in the first verse, we're going to re 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 repeat it. That we're going to come back to that in the third verse. We're going to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And listeners just aren't like that. Um, they, they don't look at our songs as closely as we do usually. Um, the other thing I would worry about a little bit and take a look at, and that is the chorus. Um, and the first line is, your love hits me like a tsunami. And you're having to sing tsunami, which isn't the way it's conversationally pronounced. We can do that with a few small words and you can emph emphasize the wrong syllable. And it's cute and awkward. But tsunami, to, in order to make a rhyme out of it, feels forced. Mm -hmm. So... If you're going to do it, I would change the melody underneath it or the phrasing so that you cannot do that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to try to do that <laughs> right now. But the other thing is, if you're going to do it, it, you have a lot of image, you have a lot of lines here that don't necessarily hook up together. Mm -hmm. um, your love hits me like a tsunami. Your hug rescues me like I've never seen. It seems like we changed the subject a little too fast there. You could say um, your, your love, it washes over me and your love washes over me and leaves me clean. Your love hits me like a tsunami. It washes mm -hmm. over me and leaves me clean. So that you have at least two lines, at least mm -hmm. two lines that say for the listener, here's what I'm talking about. Yes, here is what I'm talking about. So in case they don't quite get what that means, tsunami rush, washing over you, um, you could uh, reinforce that in the second line. Or you can, you've got this beautiful, your hug rescues me um, like I've never seen. Well, a hug is not a seeable, it, you can see it, but that's not what we usually are referring to when we say your hug you know, makes yeah. me feel like this. So I would change that to something that we can feel, that's more visceral. It could even be your hug rescues me from from my darkest dreams. I mean, what does it rescue you from? Mm -hmm. What does the hug rescue you from? Um, so I think that the the chorus just needs to be, yeah, worked out a little bit, um, yeah. and use that use those lines to keep telling the listener how does this feel? How does this feel? Oh, it feels like you've set yourself up to do this. It feels like this. It feels like that. Um, but instead of giving us a payoff to it it's either it's you're like i've never seen it's a way of ducking because you you don't know what the hug feels like you've got to yeah. yeah so the singer here the songwriter doesn't quite know and what they want to tell you and so they do something like that mm -hmm. and listeners feel the energy drop when we do that we need yeah. to know what we're talking about mm -hmm. well and i feel like too sometimes you can get kind of stuck writing to a rhyme and, um, oh, it looks like we drop Robin for a second there. She should be back in a second here. Okay. I'm texting her. Please hold.
All right. Well, that's what happens when you're live. Sometimes these things happen. So let me take a look at something here. Looks like we got. All right, well, while we are waiting, how's everybody doing today? Oh, one thing I'd love to mention is if you're new here, if you've never uh, seen one of these episodes before and you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed and you haven't done so already, please hit that bell so that way you get notified every time we post. Um, and hit like on the video if you're enjoying it so far because Robin is the best. While we're waiting for Robin to come back. I'd love to hear which song has been your favorite so far if you want to sound off in the chat. So I'll just go to full. I'm gonna go to full screen here so we don't have just Robin on the screen here. There we go. While we wait for Robin to come back, I'm gonna give her a call. Hi, yeah, you're you're frozen on the screen. Did you try? I tried using the same link and I posted it in and it says unable to connect to the session. Please use it if you are not joining the same session from the same browser. But of course I am. Okay, I'll I'll create a new one. Here. Oh wait, you are back. There we go. All right. Please hold everyone. Good. Of course, yes, thank you everyone for being so patient and we'll get instead of back in here there we go she's back yeah. everyone if anything happens we'll get on the cell phone together and get it worked there we out, go we yeah did. i'll just put that you on so phone. fast <laughs> yeah yeah Okay, so we were just talking about one thing about about giving right listeners into. enough information with mm -hmm. your visuals so that they can feel what it is. When you mm -hmm. say this is like that, be sure you give them the rest of that uh, yeah. idea so that they uh, they can be there with you. Okay. Yeah. One thing I mentioned too, and I don't know if you caught it because you might have fallen off right when I right said then. it, is that it seems like uh, too. It's really easy to get stuck writing to a rhyme. And then it kind of feels like you're just trying to get the rhyme rather than really tell a good story. So. Yeah, no listener ever said, I got to hear that song again because that rhyme moved me so much. Yeah, They just don't. You can write a song that doesn't rhyme and it'll really move mm -hmm. listeners and they'll want to hear it again. So it's now that we can write with those open-ended rhymes, those vowel rhymes, mm -hmm. there's no excuse for writing something uh, to a rhyme that um, it, you know doesn't have, de doesn't have the kind of meaning that you also want. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I noticed Reed Gestil and noticed my cool Pink Floyd, Japanese Pink Floyd oh. poster. So I think it's ja it's either Korean or Japanese, but I'm pretty sure it's Japanese. Forgive me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, if anybody right. knows, let it, say it in the chat. OK. Yeah. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I got it at Amoeba in L.A. So <laughs> Amoeba Records, if you guys know that. Um, Okay, well, moving on. Uh, next song, this is called Out of Luck, and it's by Don Coyne. I haven't seen you since that night. Sometimes I talk like you're still here What happened in that screw-loose moment Is hanging in my mind all too clear I said, why don't you go get ready Let's take a drive down to Big Jake's We'll have a few drinks, check out their new band and get a couple of 
of tomahawk steaks I wasn't thinking anything more as we headed out the door Yeah. Now this is interesting. This is a this is an issue I haven't really seen very often. Um, I loved the instrumental intro. It was moody and kind of atmospheric and intriguing. I wanted to see what the song would be about. And then the song came in and it seemed to be fighting the song genre of the mm. the, the genre of the lyrics seems to be fighting the genre of the music. The music has a lot of um, kind of epic feel and um, an anthemic sort of thing. And and the storyline that he's going to tell is is kind of is about a fight. They, he gets into a fight in this um, in this joint that they're at having tomahawk steaks. But it seemed to me that, the, yeah, that the lyrics were wanted to be Americana. So would be much more um, rock much more acoustic maybe or mm -hmm. roots rock it would certainly be a uh, roadhouse rock style song so because words like uh, screw loose big jakes tomahawk steaks this night would suck juice and dude just didn't go with that very serious track that uh and melody that this is written to so mm -hmm. i'm not quite sure how these two things got together but i don't if, if this is a uh, it just gives one person Don Coyne. So I don't know if Don it wrote all of this or if mm. this is a co-writer in here somewhere. But um, there, there, I would take that, I would separate these and I would uh, take that lyric and look at some of the Americana uh, songs like, um, and we talked about Coulter Wall earlier, mm. Sleeping on the Blacktop. I would really look at the Steel Woods, S-T-E-E-L, Woods, W O O D S, the Steel Woods, Let the Rain Come Down, a song like that. You try singing your lyric to it, see if it doesn't fit a little bit more comfortably to something like that. Or Chris Stapleton's Cold, mm -hmm. um, about, you know, why do you break my heart when you broke my heart? It shattered like a rock through a window. It's got that kind of um, tough street fighter, um, a rural uh, roadhouse feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, Nathaniel Rateliff, maybe uh, one of his songs might work for this as mm -hmm. well. There's a lot of good uh, roots rock bands out there. And this yeah. lyric certainly seems like it would work better that way. Yeah, I agree. I think I think you're right. I, I don't know if this is the right use of that word, but I feel like prosody can be really important. Having yeah. the stuff <laughs> match what your lyric is and make sense there. It's yeah, so it's that's the word. You mm -hmm. want the two to support each other. And here they're kind of fighting each other. The track keeps pulling us in a more serious direction. And the lyric is pulling us towards a raucous Saturday night fight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're fighting over this girl. And it's it's a great song. It just needs that kind of energy to make the listener go, yeah, I, I, I totally get that. You know, totally. it's, it's, different. it's too serious now. Yeah. Nice work, though. And the, on separately, yeah. nice work on the track and on the, the lyric. Nice work. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Well, up next, we have a uh, next plane after that by Michael Miller. Sitting here thinking it's time to leave, but I can't stand to go. If I hang, I get shot down, give it up and the chance is blown. Keeping secrets ain't my thing, so I'll tell you where it's at. I'm leaving on that jet plane, or maybe the next plane after that. Maybe I should go and get lost if my sanity is found. Great. 
great. I love that's, that. <laughs> that's really fun. I love the idea of I'm leaving on the next train or maybe the one after that. <laughs> um, it's got a lot of humor in it. Um, I love the attitude of the singer. Lots of character there. Plenty of energy. And speaking of Roadhouse Rock um, and Roots Rock, this is it right here. It's got totally. all that energy in it. Um, great vocal. Guitar work is in the style. Everything's working in that style together. Um, uh, I would. Uh, uh, there's a spoken word part at the end, uh, Michael, and I would uh, keep the drums going under that, at least the drums, if not drums and guitar. It's a great payoff, but the energy drops out when he's doing that kind of spoken word thing. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. I'm leaving Someone this lousy old... This uh, someone called it Psycho Billy. Psycho Billy, yeah. Which kind of, yeah. I, I totally get that. And which is funny because it made me think of, this is making me sound very young, but when I was younger, Guitar Hero was really big. And this song just like made me think of that. And I feel like it's making me think of that song, like Psycho Billy Freak Out. <laughs> so yes, I forget who go. it's by, but I remember the song and playing it on Guitar Hero. Somebody in the chat is going to know, I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, it's a really clever, he ends up with this whole series where he speaks. He says, I'm leaving this lousy old nasty ass Poe Duncan backwater cow tip and split rail barbed wire chuckle ahead and grease finger. He just goes on. So great. It's wonderful. And I want to keep the beat going underneath that so the energy doesn't drop out because it's a great payoff to the song. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I think we're looking, there's a certain novelty angle here that you won't be able to pitch this into film and TV because it's too specific really for anything. Um, maybe that ending, you know, in, in my Beetle, he's leaving in my Beetle pickup truck and he doesn't say, or maybe the next one after that. Um, <laughs> so maybe they could use the end of this song, but it's very difficult to get a music uh, supervisor to listen to the end of a song if they've yeah. already, you know, they, they can't, they don't have that much time. Mm -hmm. And so if they haven't gotten it, you know, right in the first verse or two, a, an idea for the use. So one way around that is to get those songs up on social media and to create some viral interest in it. And then, uh, you know, Music Soups do uh, cruise through those social media. It's true. Uh, yeah, on YouTube, they all say they do. And um, and if it if there's enough action around it, if there's a buzz around it, or it's getting on some of those playlists and music blogs, uh, they will listen and they'll listen through to the end. Um, because they want to know what the buzz is about. Mm -hmm. They want to know what people are talking about. If there's a use for it, um, that would be it. They, it would be the very end, the end of the song right there. Mm. Um, but it's going to be very limited uses. So um, a music library won't take that in because they want songs with the maximum number of uses. They want to know mm -hmm. that they can pitch it a lot. So a music library won't take that in, but a music soup with a specific need if they oh. happen to come across it so it's a it's a long shot but it's such a fun song mm -hmm. people should hear it and um i think social media is the place to to be putting that yeah one one thing too i mean we will get requests direct from supervisors and they'll be you know super obscure or just very specific and you know you never know we might get something like that because we do work with some uh some directors and music supervisors that are on these like kind of films that would have this type of music. So you never know, you might, you might uh, absolutely run across yeah. something on our, on our site. A so. comedy film with a, with a, mm -hmm. you know, twist, a Southern twist to it. Um, yeah. There are uses for something like this and you're right. Taxi does carry those things. So mm -hmm. keep your eyes out for something like that. Yeah, definitely. All right. We'll cruise them right along. Uh, this next song is called Amelia Clark, great actress, <laughs> and I'm, it's I'm, uh, by Neil McGettigan.
funny. I love the reference to Stark, too, because she was on Game of Thrones, and that's like a name of someone. (laughs) I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones. I didn't even think of that. I didn't put that together. I was always Stark. I want to meet (laughs) Amelia Clark. It's really cute. It's very cute. It's got that novelty spin on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So it's a pop novelty uh, it's something like this could explode on YouTube, really. Um, people who are fans of Game of Thrones, fans of hers, uh, will get a real kick out of this song. It's very well done. It's well recorded. It's uh, a good uh, recording and a good vocal that really suits the style. I'm reminded a little bit of the Kinks, you know, kinds mm-hmm. of those kinds of songs. It does seem like there's a lot of throwback today. The vibe um, on it reminded me a bit of not the guitar sounds a little different, but it was almost immediately made me think of dire straits funnily enough oh like, yeah like that's Souls a good one swing yeah yes i was trying to think i know it's there's other ones that it also is reminding me of and mm-hmm. dire straits is a really good call um and so i uh, something like this it doesn't have to be you know the most contemporary thing in the world it just has to be catchy and fun and written so that every line makes you go oh that's so funny oh that's cute oh yeah that really works that's yeah and so i think this one is close. I'm a little concerned about at, at points where the rhymes feel a little bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, the very first the very first verse. I've got a mission, might be hopeful wishing to romance someone I don't really know. Great opening, great opening. Two lines. People go, what? Why? Why are you doing that? Somebody you don't know. She's a vision, perhaps above suspicion is there for the rhyme, it seems like, uh, unless there's something specific that you're referencing about a, a role of hers that her fans would know. Above Suspicion might be a movie that she was okay. in. I am not 100% ah. sure on that, but I know hey, Solo Catherine. is one. <laughs> you guys oh, might okay. know. And because he capitalized Solo, and I'm looking mm-hmm. at this going, I don't know. Yeah, that's and another movie. I don't want to be in. Solo. Um, so... Because I'm not as up on her career as some other people. Because that's who it's aimed at. It's aimed at the mega fans of yeah. hers. And you'll reach them on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And if you put this into a little YouTube video, just with a picture of her that's out in the public domain somewhere, mm-hmm. you probably could get something. Um, then, and you put that up on YouTube, that's it. Don't Don't try to fill it with pictures of her and stuff. Just do that. So the song is really right out front. You can actually pay Google ads for a five second skippable ad Mm -hmm. and you can tell them what you want to show it in front of. And so you can pick all of the videos on YouTube about Amelia Clark and have them show this. And people uh, who are into Amelia Clark who hear it might have a lot of fun and come over and listen to the rest of your songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And it doesn't cost much because unless they listen to it for 30 seconds, you don't even pay anything. And if they listen for 30 seconds, it's a couple of cents. It doesn't cost much. So that's all Google ads. And um, that would work as a five second skippable ad. And you'd reach a lot of people who would be the audience for this. And that's one of the tricky things about a song like this is reaching that audience. Um, that was my only feedback. It's a, it's very appealing. Um, the, and since the rhymes, you know more about Amelia Clark than I do. I think the rhymes are probably there because they're supposed to be there. Yeah. Right? Have some Yeah, I'm looking at these. Like I this. can see a lot of, uh, like, references uh, to roles and, and titles of movies and stuff. So. Oh, good. Okay. So this is very so well done then. And you should get it out there to her fans. And then if you'd like to do some more like this, because it sounds like um, uh, Neil has a, a very good... Uh, handle on writing parody and ri- on writing comedy and novelty, you could do a couple more like this and just do the same thing and reach out to those audiences who enjoy this type of song mm-hmm. and they get the jokes. There you go. Yeah. Very, I very like cute. That. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, well, moving on, um, this next one is called I'll Be There For You and it's by Ralph Oleski. Giving all of yourself Put your own needs upon the shelf Helping hand that's your way Looking to make everything better Just some 
So then it's going to go into the next uh, this the next set of verses. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we have a double verse at the top, and then pre-chorus, chorus. Okay, and it comes to a complete stop. I think before the pre-chorus or at the end of the pre-chorus before it goes to the chorus. I would be careful about those complete stops and mm -hmm. the dead air in there. I just think this song wants to chug right along. It's got a great groove underneath it. It's very cute. The lighthearted track and her voice just work really well together and it feels good. Um, so I, the coming to the full, the complete stop is, is, um, you know, I don't, I just don't think it'll work for film and TV. See if you can just edit it out. Cause this is a very nice track. I don't know if it's done and whether you can, um, try it make any changes or not but if you can i would try uh taking that out um this is an interesting uh theme and lyric uh here the singer is saying is talking about someone else and describing that person and saying oh you're so selfless you put yourself away up on the shelf helping hand that's your way um that's the first four lines introduces the other person um and then we have another four line verse and they, it does the same thing. Uh, just so much time in a day, but you'll find a way to get it done. And it tells us more about the other person. I think somewhere in there, um, we need to see something about the singer's relationship. I watch you every day. Mm -hmm. um, so much You do so much, but you get it all done. Days go by, there's no one. Just get the singer in there so we have a clue relationship there. Um, between these two people, of some kind, between these two people. Um, then there's a pre-chorus, but one day may come when you need someone and I just want you to know. So that's why we need the singer to be in there by that time. It's, it's um, one day may come when you need someone. And we need to know that this, this is probably going to be the singer who's going to say, it's going to be me, I'll be there. And I just want you to know. Now we're into the chorus. When you need, I will see you through. Should you bleed, I will care for you. If you fall, I will help you up. Don't you know I'll be there for you? I just, I think that we don't have a clear, we don't have enough information about the singer and this, what this, how the, how the singer cares for the other person before we get to this commitment, this vow that we get mm -hmm. in the chorus. It seems to come a little bit out of nowhere. Um, so I'd like to see a little, a rewrite on, um, one of those two verses so that we meet the singer and uh, get an idea of the, the fact that this person might actually be doing so much that it's getting in there that's hurting them. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, why would the singer say, you know, when you need, I will see you through. Should you bleed, I will care for you. I think the singer needs to see the other person uh, grappling with or wrestling with uh, life a little bit more than, oh, you get everything done and everything's okay. I mean, that's very lovely and it fits the light feel of the track, but it doesn't seem to fit um, what's in the chorus, mm -hmm. uh, the need and bleed and fall. I think we need to uh, telegraph that a little bit. Um, let's see, uh, for film and TV, um, I have a note that the chorus is very much like the verse in terms of melody, 
But I'm, I took I take that back. I listened earlier and I felt mm -hmm. that way about it. But now I, I'm going to take that back. I think the melody in the in the chorus is really very nice. It's it's not what you expect. It, it wraps around in yeah. unusual way with the lyric. And I liked that. Um, so I would just take a look at that, at getting introducing the singer and the other person a little bit differently at the beginning and then keep that going. The second verse, maybe one day you'll see a reward for your unselfish deeds. I, we're still back in the same first verse that hasn't really developed. Mm. So that's we need to see more repayment for all your love, a kind of joy that will last forever. But this doesn't have anything to do with the chorus. So we have a disconnect between the verse lyric and the chorus. I think it might be two different songs. So let's work backwards from the chorus, folks. Always work backwards from your chorus. Start with what you, when you get a chorus you like, you may have already written a couple of verses before you get to that chorus. And then out comes this inspired chorus. You need to go back and check to see if your verses still work or do you need to rewrite those verses so that they match what the chorus is about. And I think that might be what happened here. Yeah. There's plenty to say with a chorus like this. There's plenty to write about. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that's that's so easy, definitely, when you, you write a great chorus, but you're like, well, I already wrote these verses. <laughs> yeah, and, and I want to keep on both. And yeah. that's that. That's when you get to that point where you have to say, it's two songs. And like mm -hmm. you did earlier, you said, and that's better than one. There you, <laughs> you go. Know? You have another starting point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not finished and you thought your song was finished and that's not good. But it's the point is you have two great songs here. And so this the whole thing about the unselfish person, what kind of chorus goes with that? Mm -hmm. And then this person who's probably pushing themselves too hard and not taking care of themselves as they should. And we don't get the, enough of that in the verses and how the singer mm -hmm. sees that happening and what the singer is concerned about so that they're offering this in case you hurt yourself, in case you bleed. I'm here. I'm here because mm -hmm. I see that that might be something that might happen to you. Um, and that yeah. has to be in those verses. That's really good. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a nice song. It's a beautiful. I love the track. Love the vocal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, this song is called Get On Up, and it's by Rob Hodder. Get on up. Move the way that you want to do. great I, I just want to let it play you know it's just so good yeah, it's so i good. love her feel, voice so is so good yeah that's so yeah good. and the harmonies it's got a gospel r&b feel to it mm -hmm. and and of course again we're talking throwback here i really hear the staple singers in this mm -hmm. one and a little bit of sly in the family stone this is a very popular style in the late 60s and early 70s as the civil rights movement moved along and Aretha Franklin, Sam Cooke, and all of the great black singers, Otis Redding. Um, outstanding, I love this style. Um, I think this is an excellent track. It's beautifully recorded. It's got that great gospel R&B feel, a catchy hook, get on up, move the way that you want to do. This could be underneath any scene. And like you were saying earlier, a prosody, this track fits this mm -hmm. feel and it makes you want to move the way that you want to do. And so it's a great lyric for this track. It's perfect. Um, 
And uh, and it's very much in the style, the rest of the lyric, I know that life's been dragging you down, wrong type of people you've been hanging around, let me point you in a new direction. Everything is changing, everything's moving in a positive way towards uh, what the singer uh, is singing about in the chorus. Very well done, very great focus. I could definitely mm-hmm. see this used in a lot of different scenes. Um, any kind of urban scene where people are beginning to make a change. you got a montage where people are maybe putting in a garden in an urban block that was kind of blasted looking. And you play this song underneath a montage as you see people putting that garden together. It's perfect for montage scenes that mm-hmm. want to project lots of energy and moving forward. I would think that if you are interested in pitching this to music libraries through Taxi or you want to wait till there's a music supervisor listing for that, I would definitely think that there's going to be interest in this. Beautifully recorded If uh, and, and not this sounds expensive to me. So If you've got more like this, if you've got access to this singer and you can write more like this, I would absolutely be doing it because I think music libraries would take just take this in in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Any thoughts on that yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Someone mentioned they said it would be uh, it's a nice course for commercials. And I do agree with that. I think that the Mm -hmm. the um, hook is very universal and very just punchy which I think is important for commercials. Um, And I think too, we get a lot of um, like soul, um, or not like a ton, but we will get um, requests for like soul stuff too. And I feel like that could work. Um, Obviously listen to the references we have, you know, (laughs) so don't take my word for it. Don't say, I got a return and Bria said that it would work. (laughs) But um but yeah, I think it could work for, opera, you know, stuff like that. As stu- and especially oh, yeah. if they're looking for like old school soul. Yeah, so imagine. I mean, this could work great underneath a commercial about, you know, losing weight. Get on yeah. that, move the way that you want to oh do. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. totally. So it's just totally. about anything. Yeah, so I think that's got a ton mm-hmm. of commercial possibilities. I really do. And just keep making it. If you can make this more of it, make more of it. Yeah, and I don't right. I don't know who the singer is, but she is gold and you should definitely keep working with yeah. her. So Yeah. 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 Uh, anything right. in well, the chat about that? Um I think that was the only thing that I really noticed was the okay. the um the comment about for uh that it would be good for commercials. And someone said who's the songwriter? Definitely. The songwriter is uh, Rob Hodder. I don't know if it's a co-writer or not, but that's what's on my sheet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can see, sorry, I also see someone in the chat, Eric, uh, who seems like they're a little having some trouble with the music industry. And I see that our wonderful people that are in the chat, our wonderful taxi family, is suggesting that he joins the taxi forums. And I think that's a great mm. idea. It's the best we always say it's the most friendly and most supportive forum like music community out there because if you go on a lot of um other uh forums and stuff people can be kind of snobby and mean and it's not like that on the taxi forum so i definitely suggest joining the taxi forums and for anyone that's not active on there it's really great and it's free so and you don't even have to be a taxi member so there you go that's great yeah. yeah, and if you're not a taxi member, you can get the listings, too, and start watching those. That's a great thing yeah. to do. You can learn a lot about the business from those listings. Mm-hmm. What are they looking for? What are reference artists? Those reference artists are great. Mm-hmm. I let you do all the work, and then I read the listings. I read them every morning and when I get up, and yeah. I look at who the listings are in the areas that I'm interested in, and I l- listen to the reference artists, and I find a lot of new music that way that I really like mm-hmm. through those taxi listings, and you don't even have to be a member. Yeah, well, and I I actually no longer write the listings anymore, but I did for about a year. And I can tell you that we put a lot of work into finding those references. A lot of times that's the the biggest time, um, not suck, but the the, the most time consuming part of the job a lot of time is making sure we're getting you guys some really good references so you can get really close. So just know that we aren't just grabbing random stuff. We're really doing the research and making sure that that's what 
the client really wants. So you can hit that nail on the head. And of course, yeah. as always, you know, if you're getting a return, it does not mean that the screener didn't like your song. It just means that it didn't fit what we were looking for. So um, that's really easy to take it personally, especially as a creative. Um, you know, it's uh, that's your baby. That's your song, baby. But um, don't worry. It doesn't mean they didn't like it. It just means that no. it didn't fit. Because they would love to forward anything. Ask any of our screeners because it's a lot easier for them to forward everything. And Robin knows she was head screener at Taxi for a long yeah. time. So she yeah. knows. And they love finding good music. They love it. I love oh hearing gosh, these yeah. songs. There's so much good music here. There's so much talent here today. Oh, and one thing Katrina says, you we find the references. Not always. Sometimes they do give us references. And if they do, we use those. But if they don't, then we have to find them. And, and a lot of times it, it happens that way or they'll just give us one and we have to find stuff like that. But there's a whole episode that where Michael and I talked about this that you can go and watch. And I can make sure that we get that in the that corner uh, by Robin um, oh, for later that you can click on it when you're watching this back. Um, but anyway, so we have time for one more. Um, so this last song, it's called Loving You and it's by Samu Cernak. beautiful um those bossa nova chords mm -hmm. um it's a absolutely gorgeous bossa nova um beautiful voice vocal on that um uh it, it just has a great atmosphere and it makes mm -hmm. you feel relaxed and you know just the way that that it works on your feelings on your body it really is beautiful the track alone uh, would work for a scene underneath the scene. Yeah, totally. It's just beautiful. Um, the lyric is what needs work here. And uh, it sounds like the singer, I'm, I don't know if the singer is also Samu, the writer, but it sounds like English is not your first language. And from the lyric, it also sounds like that too. So I would suggest given how beautiful this is and this voice that uh, if you want to co-write with somebody who is an English speaker, yeah, I would definitely, definitely recommend that. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to do that with you. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to work on this one, the issues here have to do with um, how we use language in terms of um, just everyday speech. It's so hard to write songs. I always admire people who, who try to write songs or do write songs in a language that's not their native language because so much of songs and the effect of them has to do with the associations that we have mm -hmm. with the images and the words that we put into the lyrics. So when you say, um, my love, yes, my love, but I left you and I can hardly stand the time without you. So we're left to ask, well, why did you leave this person mm -hmm. if you love them so much? And it makes the listener stop and think instead of just enjoying and feeling, going with the flow of the music, which is what we want them to do always. We need to be sure that we don't take them off and give them questions that, that get their little brains working instead of their hearts. Um, and that's what I think is happening here. Oh, my love, I loved you. Uh, yes, my darling, please be true is the second line of the song. 
was she untrue? And then he left her. It looks like there's a whole, um, you know, rather complicated story behind this. And the music itself is so uncomplicatedly beautiful that really this type of, of track seems to almost begs for a girl from Ipanema. You know, mm. oh, she just walks by and she's so beautiful. <sighs> Would she ever look at me? And that's it. That's the lyric. You know, that's all mm. there is to the lyric. Um, so we want something that's sensuous to match the music and, and your voice certainly matches the music and the I'm still loving you matches the music. So I think that you could rewrite some of this just to leave out anything except that I long, except the idea of those, uh, those starry nights that we spent, those nights we spent under the stars, you know, you and I hand in hand, how beautiful it was, but it, you know, and how much I miss mm -hmm. you now. And you don't have to say anything about what happened, why we're not together yeah. or don't have them be together. And just, I'm still loving you because we have a love that lasts. Mm -hmm. it, that would work very well also. So either of those themes would work. I still love you after all these years of us walking hand in hand through life, or I'm still missing you, which would be um, the, the feeling that you would have if the if you weren't together with her and just give us an idea of what she's like that um, you are like uh, a storm you know sometimes and then you're like the sun i you know i love being with you because i never know what what kind of weather mm -hmm. i will get i mean that will do for a verse right there I and then that. i love you i'm still loving you i'll always love you mm -hmm. and you're done and it would be so beautiful so that would be my suggestion on this gorgeous track with a gorgeous vocal. I hope you can redo this lyric because I would, uh, I, I think that's what you're going to need to do in order to move this song forward. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, I mean, I think in the context of like Taxi Listens too, we do get requests, not all the time, but I've definitely seen requests come through for Bossa Nova or um, just in general, like Brazilian music. Um, so yes. including bossa nova so this would be a great thing for that but um and even bossa nova is, I, yeah sorry go ahead ba bossa nova is very popular it has a big audience totally. there's a resurgence absolutely the resurgence of interest in brazilian music both the dance by baile funk the dance side of mm -hmm. it but also the bossa nova side which has had a there's a neo bossa nova this is much closer to joao Gilberto mm -hmm. than it is to the neo bossa nova, but it's still, I mean, there's a huge audience for this out there. So social media would help you get that out to people. And I have seen uh, one off. Uh, I, I do watch the taxi listings and you're right. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen too much for bossa nova, um, yeah. but it is something that, that, libraries don't have and mm -hmm. they know that there's the occasional request for it so taxi might w want to ask a library are you looking for bossa nova totally. just to pull in some of these beautiful songs that are out there that people have mm -hmm. well and that's the thing too i mean if you have that this music and you you know see a request for it submit because you know we love to find it's sometimes this kind of music especially we see that with like a lot of latin music too where it's almost like a chicken and egg situation where you know we could get a listing but maybe we won't get the amount of submissions for it that we need and then we you know so it's it kind of goes back and forth so when you do see those if you got stuff that fits send it because then you know that's something we can say hey our members do really good boss nova are you ever looking for stuff like that so. i would definitely see if you could check on that because you certainly have one um, mm -hmm. for sure. And I bet you, I know, in fact, you have another one because one yeah. of my clients is a very good friend. She writes French bossa nova, bossa mm -hmm. nova in French. And she got a huge placement at uh, Max Mara, the department wow. store, in store in the cosmetics department in this beautiful French bossa nova because it's so sensuous. So you can actually find, they are out there. It's just mm -hmm. finding those niches where they get used. Yeah, well, and I feel like even having a version that's in whatever your native tongue is, whether that's, I don't know if that would be Portuguese oh, yes. or would be cool. You could have both versions. I mean, you look at Girl from Ipanema, I think has a version in Portuguese and in English. I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but that's the type of stuff. Oh, yeah. so same with jazz is a lot of those like um, like luxury brands love to use like very classy music and that's where you make the money because they can really uh, yeah. pay, pay a lot on their Good um, point, ads. good point. 
So. And you're absolutely right. Doing um, Desafinado was done in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, and also uh, in English. And so it gets released both ways. But there's something so sensual about singing mm -hmm. in Portu Brazilian oh Portuguese. Gosh, yeah. That's just, oh, people love it. They don't even care what you're saying. So I would <laughs> actually put it, I would do that. Great, great yeah. suggestion, Bria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh. Shall we, are we, we're at 5.30. Do you yeah, want to? Was, I think that's that all we fast. got for right. for today. It went by fast. It totally did. Um, but of course, I want to remind you guys, don't forget to check out Robin's blog. Ah. Is that and the links and you know, are in the description. And there's ebook version mm -hmm. of it that is the updated revised edition and yes. expanded. And that's in three ebooks because it would be mm -hmm. 900 pages if it was one of those books. And yes. so I put it in three. And the references uh, on any of those shortcuts go all the way up to uh, 2020. Nice. And um, yeah, so even though these are a little bit older, they're still good references. They still mm -hmm. will teach you all of this stuff. But there, we have seen differences uh, and and an evolving melody style that's using totally. a lot more rhythm now. And so I did that. I was one of the reasons that I wanted to do the updated edition was to put awesome. in all these uh, melody rhythm uh, pattern things that we're doing now in especially in pop and edm so mm -hmm. that's uh you can get those at amazon also and they're only 10 bucks a piece so you can they're all three different levels and you can get the level that suits you and okay. uh go through that it's an ebook only we're not yeah. i don't think we're going to do those pay, print anytime that's soon that's so awesome though yeah i mean there's there is so much amazing information and uh just amazing tips in all of those books so you'd be crazy not to get them if you don't have them yet so it's all the stuff i've been talking about today you know we yeah. all do the same things there's only so much song craft you know you and i were talking about this earlier you bring the inspiration and the emotion i can't teach you that you gotta mm. have that but the rest of it is just song craft and there's only mm -hmm. so much of it and it is evolving, but you want to jump in the river and sort of float along with everybody else and, and get using that song craft to reach listeners because that's how we ensure that listeners feel what it is that we feel that we, the songwriter feel yeah. um, is using song craft to make sure they get it. And mm -hmm. that's what my books are all about is you, any song you write that expresses what you feel, that's a good song. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take it out to listeners and get them to feel what you feel, then songcraft is the key to doing that. Just the kinds of things we were talking about today. Mm -hmm. the, the chorus, oh. the verses lead you to the chorus. And um, and I'm, I'm hoping we're holding on here. Yeah, and, you just uh, knocked out for a second, but you're back. We're I'm good. Back. Good. <laughs> Yeah, and the way that we the way that we tell listeners what it is that we feel, how do we use images to make them feel what we feel? Because mm -hmm. when I say this word, it triggers a feeling in the listener. It's really strange and amazing what we do. We talk to listeners mm -hmm. who we don't even know, and we get them to feel what we feel when we wrote the song. It really is pretty amazing what we do. It and all of incredible. you are doing a great job. I know that you are. Totally. So thanks for sharing your songs today. I really yeah. appreciate you letting me do this to you <laughs> because kind of it is yeah. um, and take your songs apart. But I really appreciate the opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you so much, Robin. Um, just a reminder, I said this earlier, but if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, click the like button. We'd love to have you as uh, subscribers so you get a notification every time we post. Um, but without further ado, we hope you have a wonderful night and we will see you next week. Bye bye. Right. Bye. Oh, I'm playing this music. <laughs>